Hi, everyone. My name is Alyssa Junius, and I'm an artist, educator, and co-founder of Arts and Wellness Collective, Sultry Sisters. Our mission is to empower communities of color to live vibrant and shine bright through soul care, creative expression, sustainability, and collective healing. We are community partners with Hill Street Country Club, and we enjoy creating programs, events, and workshops in our hometown of Oceanside. Today, we are starting a community conversation centered around radical soul care. And throughout this community conversation series, we will speak with some of the local artists and leaders who are part of the Hill Street Country Club community. During these discussions, we'll be sharing how we build community around social change and the different ways we can sustain ourselves in the movement. I am so thrilled and excited today, y'all, because we have the amazing photographer and activist Johnny Wynn today. <laughs> <laughs> this hour will be dedicated to learning more about his work as a photographer and activist and how he continues to sustain himself during this social change movement movement. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Alyssa. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Yesterday I closed down the, the Normalized Radical show. So it's kind of like wrapping it up. So it's a, bit, a lot of relief, you know, like reflecting on how, how amazing the experience was and, and just feeling good about it, you know? Nice. Thank you. I'm so excited to start this conversation of radical soul care um, with you because um, you're an artist and I and I really believe that what we do as artists is a very radical act itself. So thank you so much for being here. I wanted to start off this conversation by sharing two quotes by Angela Davis that really inspired um, this program series. And the first quote is, anyone who is interested in making change in the world also has to learn to take care of themselves. And the second quote, actually, we found on your page, Johnny, is radical <laughs> means grasping things at the root. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you feel about those quotes? Like, have you heard those before? I mean, obviously you've heard the second one, but when you hear those quotes, what does that make you think? Uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, think as we're all navigating like our roles in this social justice, like uh, an activist, kind of um, uh, ecosystem, it's really important, you know, like we want to do the best we can. And it's hard to, if like we're still trying to figure out like how we can do it effectively um, and it's overwhelming. So definitely self-care is so important because how are you gonna able to help anybody if you are yourself are, you know, have yes. like, with certain things? A hundred percent. I mean, what resonates with me about like anyone who wants to make change in the world has to take care of themselves um, as a um, as an empath, a person who definitely feels um, all the feels when I see someone crying or in pain or or aggravated. I want to go in. and I want to help. Um, uh, but then I've, I've had to recently uh, remind myself that I need to pour into myself so I can give more abundantly versus yeah. from, you know, uh, a place of depletion. So that's what I think when I hear those those quotes. Totally, totally. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. So to start off this conversation um, with Sultry Sisters, we always want to kind of define um, uh, words that we're using and talking about. So the first thing I wanted to um, ask you is what does activism mean to you? Oh, shoot. Activism. Like there is all there is obviously that that physical nature of activism is like showing up right like the the just attending protests and uh and being in solidarity with people continuing to question status quo um and seeing the inefficiencies in these systems uh so you can challenge them um but then like there's also like the yeah, like the kind of like abstract like what we want to do is ultimately like dismantle or reorganize or or uh build structures that are equitable and and abolish certain things right um but those are those are like hard goals to activism i would say like those are going to take a while like it's a continuous fight i like to localize my activism too and making sure like um my community and like you know my small circle is taken care of you know if it's like providing like 
care for my friends if in the form of babysitting mm -hmm. or making sure like like especially during covid i recognize you know like connecting with my i live in a condo association of eight people and i know every single one of those people so i'm finding like it's so vital and important to really like start like localizing your activism because then you can kind of build that solidarity even the point like even like during covid like making sure like everybody has toilet paper was so weird but right but like, like if i'm going to the store what do you need so exactly. they don't need to go out and get uh you know like things like that is is very important and i'm recognizing like like as i'm as i'm kind of navigating that those are so important because again like it's very important like if i'm if i'm trying to promote a world in which we don't need police mm -hmm. i must tell my neighbors that please do not call the police for anything that if anything yes. were to happen so they need to know that and then those conversations can have be had why like do you not yes. trust the police like you know like honestly i don't i don't feel like they're protecting me you know they come after the fact and at that point like they're gonna possibly arrest me you know like the, something's already happened or whatever it may be yes. right? so so that's that, that's that community conversation. That's that conversation that bridges your community together. And I want to just apologize. I got so active in this conversation. <laughs> I forgot to back up a little bit. And I want to just welcome everybody um, to this live. If you are joining us, please comment in the chat. Let us know who you are, where you're tuning in from. <laughs> Did you see Johnny's awesome exhibit at Hill Street, Normalized Radical? Did you check it out? Are you familiar with his work? Are you here and you're a part of the Soul Tree community? Let us know if you're in the house. We want to engage with you. Also, this is a very interactive um, conversation. Um, if you comment, we, we, we want to engage with you. So if you have any questions specifically for Johnny, if you have a specific question for me or in regards to Hill Street Country Club, go ahead and drop it. We do have some people in the house. We have Xenia. She says, hey, Johnny. I don't Zenia. know how to respond. Hey, guys. She said, what's in the house? Yeah, um, she, we went to school together, actually, art school. So What? That, okay, let's pause. <laughs> We love Xenia. She has Village Rock Shop right there in the village. And Tony and I met her um, almost two years ago and we love her. She actually has uh, photographed us before. I think I saw that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. She wow. does the, the um, double exposures. In yes. That's like her, that's her jam. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to yeah, Xenia. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's been a while. Yes. Um, I also, Tony's in the chat. Tony, she's the older, other soul <laughs> sister. Hey, y'all, excited up, for this conversation. Yeah, I was so excited for this conversation that Johnny and I, we, dropped, we jumped onto StreamYard like 15 minutes before, and we were just chatting that I totally forgot to be like, have you introduced yourself to the Facebook Live audience? So just backtracking a little bit, um, Johnny, if you could just briefly um, introduce yourself um, and tell us a little bit about your artistic practice. Yeah, okay, so my name is Johnny Nguyen Wing. And that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> One syllable and like in a form of a question. So <laughs> those are some tips. Wing. Um, I'm a, I guess you can say I'm a photographer artist. You know, I still struggle with like that label, but um, but you know, if you call me that, I'm, I'll take it. But um, but my work stems from like um a school of photography and journalism. You know, I take when I was attending Palomar. I found myself ener energized and magnetized to telling stories, documenting, being a fly in the wall, and um, and trying to convey convey this person's narrative or this event's narrative. Um, so yeah, I, I, I love telling other people's stories. However, like as I'm slowly navigating who I am as an artist, what I do. Um, I'm recognizing that I have stories myself, right? Like, especially with this portfolio, yes, I'm taking pictures of certain events and the people involved, but I have narrative, I have perspective, opinions, and thoughts. And so um, as I am now evolving, I'm recognizing that it's time for me to tell my story versus just hiding behind a lens and telling other people's stories. So that's kind of like my artistic um journey at the moment and where i'm kind of like um evolving towards 
That's beautiful. I love how you're sharing this, this, uh, your, your transition. This is a transition moment where you're shifting from being behind the lens to um, in, in front of the lens or having your narrative told versus telling other people's stories. So I love that. And, and in saying that, like when you talk about your work and we, we defined a little early, a little bit earlier, what activism means to you, I wanted to ask you how you see yourself practicing um, activism in your daily life, in your work in general. Yeah, like like you said, practicing activism in your daily life and work. Like I feel like at, at a certain point, you're you you reach that point where activism is part of your your just routine, really. And and like and like just it just shows up, like whether you like it or not, because now you're trying to just charge, right? Like you you're you're looking at things from a different perspective and a viewpoint. So you can't help but to just connect like practice activism everywhere mm -hmm. i honestly like if you can say you have a choice to practice activism or not that's uh you're quite lucky <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well, so. but what the follow-up question is like how does hill street country club play a role in your activism how does hill street country club play a role in my activism well hill street country club has always been a an ally to me yeah like I am a I am an an artist, I guess you can say, but I don't have the platform. Like I'm like I'm not out there kind of like soliciting myself and trying to get into museums or art spaces. Cause I'm fortunate that I have another job that pays my bills that I don't need to actively like cater to certain people to try to be like, hey, can you can I get my stuff in your art in your space? Like I don't do that because I'm very fortunate. So Hill Street has because it's we're local and they've known me, you know, as a community member, they just back me. So, so they've always been supportive of my activism. Like I never felt, I always felt like they wanted to show my stuff, whether it was going to sell, whether it was fine art, whether, whether it may turn people off, they had my back no matter what mm -hmm. other people thought of it. And, you know, just, um, and yeah, just me, me being a part of Hill street, like has really allowed me to like find like how I can be an, an activist in these art spaces as well, because these are different ecosystems that require people to kind of have certain roles to challenge the systems that exist. Because yeah. in art, there's institutions, as you know, that control certain things and those need to be dismantled and questioned as well. Yes. So so, so everyone who's tuning in today, we're we're centering our conversation around building community around a social change ecosystem, and specifically here at Hill Street Country Club. So, um, Hill Street Country Club, when you think about social change ecosystems, we have different ecosystems. We have a personal ecosystem, which is like our our mind, body, spirit, and soul. Then we have ecosystems which exist in our family life and our friends, and then we have community. Um, ecosystems like Hill Street Country Club, your workplace, and then we have the broader ecosystem, which is the world. And so these are different, like we said, systems that um, um, we we hold together as community to support change and um, and the movement. So that's what we're specifically talking about. And I wanted to ask you um johnny with thinking about like your personal ecosystem your uh ecosystem and Hill street um what is, when you think when i when i when you think about a social change ecosystem what does that look like to you without the definition of like deepa Iyer's work but just you personally what do you think uh, my, can you repeat that again? My, my social change ecosystem, say it again. Cause I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone who's tuning in, we are talking about Deepa Iyer's social change ecosystem. It's a framework that she created to help, uh, individuals, organizations, community members figure out their roles and how they build community and support one another. And so for, for you, Johnny, I want to ask like, when you think of a social change ecosystem in your life, whether it's personal, interpersonal, or you know, at Hill Street, what does that look like to you? 
Uh, it looks like in every aspect of of your daily life, whether it's waking up in the morning and having to take care of your children and then going to work and then having to um, converse, have conversations and work with your coworkers and then co going home and having your extracurriculars. Maybe you're an organization or you're just doing other things. You're helping with a nonprofit. All those are all those. Those are all separate ecosystems, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and not every ecosystem you play the same role. So that's how I see like how uh, these these social change ecosystems because you can have a profound effect on any one of those ecosystems. They don't have to be political, but everything in the end of the day is sort of political. Um, whether it's like in your household. You know, being being a healer, being a guide or a caretaker, you know, you're having to teach your child how to navigate this world at your workspace. You know, you have communicating with your coworkers and expressing to them your your thoughts and opinions. And if you have a power, the power to hire, those are those are places. That's where you can show up too, and say, you know what, you know, this is where I can play a role and get somebody hired, right? I love that. that. Yeah, so that, at that point, those roles are different, right? So, so yeah, I think like recognizing like everything is connected. Your whole life, you have whether you like it or not, it's political, and you and you choose to show up in spaces and you choose to step back and recognize how that has an effect. Yes. Right? Well, all that from all that you were saying, the one word that came to mind was support. So, I think. What I heard, like whether you are helping um, a child or a friend or an organization, like the e these ecosystems are built to provide support because you know you it's it's the collective healing, the community care. So mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that definition of of building ecosystems. And I want to kind of uh, use this conversation and use Johnny as an example to kind of break down um, what that looks like here at Hill Street. So I want to kind of go through um, each of the roles and then follow up with asking you, Johnny, what different roles um, you feel like you play, whether it's personal, interpersonal, or um, in our Hill Street country uh, community. So in the Deepa Iyer social change ecosystem, there are uh, various roles and that we can play um, with building community. The first one is Weaver, and Weavers see the through lines of connection. And typically they're like activists. So those are the Weavers currently um, in the movement. Um, and then we have experimenters. Um, they see the gap and they invent um, solutions. They're solution-based people. So those are the people who are creating mutual aid associations when you think about um, currently like um, the community that we're a part of. And then frontline responders, those are healthcare workers, those are food banks, those are places and people who are giving direct um, uh, help and support. Visionaries. Um, visionaries give us hope. These are the writers. These are people who uplift us with their words. Visionaries are people like Angela Davis, who says anyone who wants to create change needs to take care of themselves. So that's an example. Then we have like builders. Those are people who are ready to implement programs and make exhibitions happen. So that's like Hill Street Country Club could be like a builder in our e ecosystem. Then we have caregivers. <laughs> Those are people making masks and taking care of those in need. Um, those are people who are babysitting their friends' children. Those are caregivers. Um, and then we have disruptors. Uh, people are shaking up the status quo and people who speak out. So those are people who are like calling it out like it is. Um, and then we have healers, people who tend to trauma, people with empathy, people who are there to um, offer um, emotional support, uh, spiritual support. Then we have storytellers. Storytellers are those who are documenting the current times, um, the arts, music, uh, the movement. When I think of like the, uh, one of the storytellers that stuck out to me, and actually uh, you had posted it um, earlier in uh, on Instagram, is Nina Simone, like storyteller, always reflecting the times. Uh, and then guides, 
Um, these are people who have discernment, discernment, people who have words of wisdom and who um, guide you. And so those are pretty much the roles of the social change ecosystem that Deepa um, created. And so my question to you, Johnny, like out of all those roles, um, how do you relate to those roles? Do you see yourself playing more, less, one, two? <laughs> yeah. Um, again, based d depending on the ecosystem that I'm in, but ultimately I'm finding myself in the past 10 years um, being more of that storyteller, right? Like I'm on the front I'm, and also be a frontline responder and a disruptor. Those are probably the three that kind of en encompass the the work that I do uh, regarding art um, and activism. For the, you know, the past 10 years, that's how I knew how to show up and and, and be in solidarity and fight for equity and and uh, and 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 yeah, and social justice. Um, so yeah, if there's a call to to be out there, I felt I, I felt energized. I felt like this is where I respond because I'm not like I felt comfortable, right? It, it, and maybe that's not comfortable for everybody to be out there and being loud. Yes, and, and uh, being in the front lines and marching. But I that was my ener that was how I fed off. Like that was how I got my energy. So yes. I think that, that's how that's this is the most important thing is when you do find your role, mm -hmm. you you get energized by doing Whoa. it. You know that's that's the role that I want. I love how you said that. Having this um like this um visceral like this feeling towards it, and I want to shoot this to our audience who is tuning in. Out of all the roles uh, mentioned, which role stuck out to you? Which role um, when you think about social change? When you think about showing up in this moment? When you think um, where do I have the most capacity and confidence? Um, where do you where do you fall? That's a that's a question for you all. For me, I'm I'm right there with you with being a storyteller as an audience uh, as a as an artist. Um, I definitely uh, enjoy playing the role of being a storyteller um, as a Pilates practitioner. I see myself as a a healer, a person where uh, people can come to heal collectively and feel like they can move through. Um, emotions and move through um, uh, and process feelings through movement. Um, and then I, that's kind of like my first two that stick out to me. Um, and then I kind of looked at guide and mm -hmm. I was like, I, it's, it's weird because I like guide, but I don't necessarily feel like I have the wisdom of a guide. So I've definitely noticed that there's certain uh, roles that I'm attracted to, but uh, don't necessarily have the confidence that if right now I had to be a guide, I don't know if I'd be right there. <laughs> right. What's important when I remember like listening to Deepa talk was that these roles aren't supposed to be concrete, mm. right? They're not supposed to be job titles that you're like, oh, that's my job title. That's what I'm good at. Therefore, I need to do that. No, like, you know, like as you navigate this, it's a long journey. And, you know, there's going to be, um, you know things that happen along the way, and it, and it's you should find new roles because you might like for me being a frontline responder and being a disruptor and a storyteller for the past ten years. I'm tired, you know. Like maybe I want to be a caregiver now, you know. Maybe in ten more years I'll have that knowledge and confidence to be a guide. So those. That's what it is, is like recognize that these aren't concrete job titles. You know, you they 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 are roles and you can inhabit any one you want. And like sometimes like as you do this as you do this exercise, you're gonna you might find like, hey man, like I am why am I doing why am I always like this person or like this? Like, is there a way I can like connect myself to if I want to be a guide or a caregiver? Like, is there a way I can like do that and like hopefully being a part in these the ecosystems you can find like other people who are in certain roles that can teach you how to how to do that absolutely we've had some people respond uh Zinia says i think visionary yes yeah yes. Visionary. Mm -hmm. visionary so the visionary is the person that gives us hope those are the writers those are people who are um um helping inspire us and uplift us Mm -hmm. the, the dreamers, you know, like the, 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 they're imagining the boldest possibilities, you know, so then we can kind of like 
on, hope, hope, you know, like that we can reach them. Like, I feel like those are the, like the abolitionists. Yes. Like, right. Because oh, that's kind of, yes. Cause they that's they, hard to envision a world without police, but it can happen, you know, with the right mm -hmm. care. So. They provide that image. And uh, mm -hmm. Zinia commented, I thought the same as Johnny, the last 10 years I've been go, go, go. And now it's time for self-care. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to say like this, the social change ecosystem that we're talking about is meant to be a framework and a tool for us to come to and reflect. Like, how am I feeling right now? How, how, what, what capacity do I have to show up? Cause I think when we, when we think about, um, you know, going past this election, you know, everyone has been leading up to like, Oh, Tuesday, we're going to know. And Tuesday. And, and then once, once this is all over, I kept hearing, hearing people saying like, once this is all over, I'm like, once this is all over, what's over? Like, over. like, honestly, like the question, like what's over? Um, uh, because I think for me, um, if there's anything that I've, uh, tapped into is that there's th that cyclical like there's just this continuation and and there's, there's this wave and that's where we're bringing this conversation of radical soul care and talking about the social social change ecosystem because y'all we're in for a ride and we 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 want to inspire and start this conversation of how do we sustain ourselves during this movement how do we and leading into that i want to ask you johnny like how when you reflect now from the past 10 years and like you just you just ended your exhibit, uh, Normalized Radical, which really sh documented the 10 years of you being, a, being an activist and a photographer out here in these streets. How, how did you sustain yourself? Like what, what got kept you going, coming back and continuing this work? Uh, well, I know that I, like, again, it was an energized feeling. Like I felt like, you know, I, I wanted to, um, based on my experience, I felt like I could do something, you know, and like, and so that kept me energized to like, to keep keep doing something because I I I, I love the art, the the art, the creative art, the, the creative. Mm. Art. But after you do that, it's tiring, you know. Coming back from like Standing Rock, you know, like being there for three days, or or you know, like this influx of like what happened in 2020 with black with with Black Lives Matter. Like you start, you get tired, you get worn out. So, so for me, make, making sure like I'm prioritizing myself too and not feeling guilty about it. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing because we're like, I'm very critical of myself. I'm my worst enemy. Like I'm like questioning, am I showing up appropriately? Like, is this self-serving? Um, Like, like, am I coming off as a poser? Like, so many other people are doing this work that's so important. I'm just shooting photos. Like, where, where do where where's my importance? You know, like, how how am I liberating folks? You know, or 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 cr providing equity in these systems? Like, by just taking photos. So yeah, I hear you. Yourself, you know, like you're you're your own worst enemy. So I think reeling it back because nobody says that. Yeah. About, <laughs> you know, why am I saying that about myself? So yeah, taking breaks is so huge and not feeling guilty about yourself. Yeah, those are the biggest things and, and relying on community, you know, yeah. so important. I wanted to to respond to, to your answer about, you know, sustaining sustaining yourself in this work and how you know you you're questioning like is this is this self-fulfilling? Is and mm -hmm. and is this the for me, when I when I saw your work and and knowing that it was through the span of ten years and having that question of like how um, like how you sustain yourself in the work, but also how how beautiful and how the gratitude of how these conversations about these these events are sus are sustained through your work, sustained through that photograph, um, right. because with a photograph. We can revisit the yes. memory. We can, and we can have the conversations of what happened here. What happened here? Um, where are we going? Where we, where do we come from? And I, and for me, when I think of photography and I think of just being a storyteller, I think those are the questions. That those, that's the kind of space we hold is a moment to reflect yeah. and and a, and, a, and a moment to un like uh, just. And that's what I see in your work is like it does sustain the conversation. So. 
that's just my take. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. And like, I, I need those, those affirmations and I don't know when now it's, it's going to be like, all right, is that enough, Johnny? Have you gotten enough affirmations to kind of give you confidence that you're doing okay? Like <laughs> that's so thank you for that. Like, shoot, I just, I need to get over that, you know, because like, because yeah, sometimes it's just when you're, when you're taking photos, just like there's real work out there. People are like getting arrested or people are like you know, putting life, life and body on the line. And I'm just, chilling back here just with the camera so it's such a privileged position in a way right so so yeah thank you once again yeah i think it's it, i think it's it's beautiful that you're able to articulate and have that reflection because when it comes to um building community is to understand where our privilege is and how we can help our community you know, when we think about um, uh, if I have, you know, something extra, if I have, you know, when we're talking about, you know, uh, food banks, if I have something extra, I'm going to bring it, you know, so recognizing something so simple, like I have the, I have a, a I have a car, I have the privilege of giving someone a ride. I think those are the things that allow us to show up for our community once we know what our privileges are and how we can use them to help each other. Totally. So oh. I think it's good to to acknowledge them. <laughs> right. And especially now, you know, like um, you know, I, I don't rely on art to 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 fund, you know, my my to pay for my rent and my food on the table. So I I my my position as an engineer for the city gives me security, gives me uh um steady income. And as I'm reevaluating my roles, like this is how I can contribute and participate, right? It's like, mm -hmm. I don't see the role as being like a financier or something on this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on, on, on Deepa's model. But mm -hmm. in a way that's kind of, kind of how I feel like I want to show up now. Like if, if, if I can like continuously donate on a monthly basis, don't let it be a one-time thing. So yeah. I'm actually thinking I got X amount of money per month. Let's do this, let's put it in things, you know? Yes. I want to I want to segue into speaking of um, giving back and 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 donating. Can you tell us a little bit about the initiative that you supported through your work at Hill Street, which are normalized radical exhibit? I believe you your work was you, you donated um, funds. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so all the proceeds from the print sales and art sales uh, went went to San Diego Bell Fund. And the the that the symbology behind that is um is that like my work is motivated by the folks that are doing the work on the ground, those frontline responders, right? Those organizers, um, and you know frontline responders isn't it limited to like just the organizing organizers of protests and marches either, and and those ones that are just risking and disrupting and shaking the status quo on the ground. Um, we got to support them. But um, but also frontline responders are providing like mutual aid for your community, right? Like during these during these like mm -hmm. times, like say COVID, the ones that are like setting up GoFundMe's to 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 transfer funds over to say a a, a trans a, a trans woman that's gonna possibly be homeless. That's the most effective way you can donate is donate directly to that person. So if you see a call out, donate to that. You know, just because it doesn't have like a Red Cross, like nonprofit mm -hmm. E3 doesn't mean that you don't donate. You donate directly to that person's pocket. That's how that's the most effective way you can do that. I completely agree because we're because when we you, you're exactly right in this social change ecosystem, it doesn't have that definition. But Deepa also said you can create right. and expand on these definitions. And I love how you talked about using your art to fund and support, you know, uh people who are who are who are out here and and protesting and may have you know may need those funds to get out of jail and and also talking about the mutual aid because i think also when we think about social change and people right now are saying you know thinking that their power you know when you think about positions of power and you're voting and if you're if the person you voted for or the person that's your representative is not the person in power that then there's a sense of like this powerlessness and i actually disagree because we're talking about having these ecosystems and how we can and we do have the power to directly impact and change and support someone like right mutual aid um through using your art to donate 
directly to an organization. And yeah. so I, for me, like that's the kind of uh, conversation I want to kind of have with everyone who's here is just kind of offering that, um, offering that to them of changing your perspective of what, what social change looks like. It's not right. just, it's beyond the ballot. It's not just, you know, using your voice for policies, but using your voice and putting it into practice daily. Yes, because we're envisioning an, a, a, an idealistic world, right? Like where we all care for each other and we don't like, you know, like we don't need cops and things like that. So we have to practice that model, right? And show people that it can work and that it's not just a pipe dream that kids like dream of, you know, like these can be put into effect. And so this model, yeah, we, we, we have to live that. We have to like definitely just be the, the walking kind of like example of this. But yes, going back to, yeah, I, I'm just like, I've, I've seen people get arrested and I hate that. Like, and I've heard horror stories from like, you know, your basic human rights are taken away from you. They know you're being, they know you're a protester. They're treating you different. They're gonna increase that bail. They're gonna exhaust all your funds keep you in jail, possibly have you lose your job, you know, and like, and not care for your family. Those are huge hits. So like, I just want SD bail fund I, to keep doing their work because I want people back in their house, you know, taking care of their family, going to their jobs and not being restricted from peeing or eating food when they're in jail. They're abusing you in there. Yes. That's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So definitely, I, I want to support those, front, those, those front line. Folks. Yeah, and, and it's it's a beautiful example for 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 people to see how you can use your art to to mm -hmm. create change, and and it's a form of community care. It is. Um, uh, I think uh, I want to kind of segue into speaking about um, uh, community care and collective healing, and for you as an artist, what does that look like? Like I know we talked about your 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 work um, um, and donating, but expanding on that a little bit, like when you think about community care and when you think about collective healing, what, when you imagine what could, what could that look like? Not what does it look like, but what could it look like when you think about um, that in, at Hill Street? Yeah, uh, with Hill Street and, and in general, I feel like with Hill Street specifically, the community care is like, I know I know Dinah personally. Um, I'm the I'm the godfather to her son, so I feel like that's like a direct community care that I can provide um, by just spending more time with them, you know, or or making sure if Dinah needs a day off, can I be there, you know, mm -hmm. to, to babysit or something like that. I want I want to be a resource to 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 again set this example that like. This can happen, you know, like, and this doesn't have to happen between friends, but this can happen between my neighbors. Like my neighbors need something. I've walked their dogs before, you know, I, I, I want to be available. So that's, those are the, the direct, like, um, that's what I feel like community care is, you know, like. All, I, I, I love how it, this is making me think about when we were talking about earlier, you pointed out that for Deepa Iyer's roles, they're not job descriptions. They're not, they're not hard and formal. These are like ways to think in which you can show up. And, and, and when we think about community care and we think about community, um, just, and you think about uh, connecting with your neighbors, just not, just having that personable um, interaction, just, just wanting just that, that want to just support and having that like, Hey, I'm here, I'm here. And for me, when I think about, um, Hill Street Country Club and my first experience, um, I actually went to, um, I went to a, a protest poster painting, um, session at, in, like, about around June and I actually met another artist, uh, uh, Kevin Lope, uh, Ke yeah, Kelvin, Kelvin. There. yeah, mm -hmm. Kelvin. And, um, and when I saw Dinah and her, she was just like, Hey, you're here. It was just, I felt like at that moment being there was enough showing up yes. was enough. And I want to say, you know, to everybody like joining in on the conversation who might be like, well, I don't know what role I play. I'm not really sure. I'm not an artist. I'm not an organizer. I'm not frontline. I don't have, 
um, this. It's, it's really having that intention of saying out loud, saying to someone, Hey, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm present. And, yeah. um, in your heart saying, I want to show up because saying those affirmations of I'm here and I want to show up, those things will come to you because you're open to it. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think when I, when I think about building community, it's just showing up and, 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 and doing what needs to be done in the present moment, whatever that looks like, whether that means you just showing up for yourself. Like I need this, I need to come to Hill street so I can connect with people. I need to come to Hill street to get, um, inspiration from the work there. I just need to get out of my house. Um, that's, that's part of being engaged. Yes. Yeah. That getting out of the house, like that's, um, like being like, I feel like community care is also, um, intertwines with self care. Right. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to make sure you're, you're going, you know, taking care yeah. of yourself. What's it, what has it been like? Cause I know for your exhibit, you know, because it's during COVID and we can't have these big, um, gatherings. Uh, I saw that you had, you know, appointments and people, you were there to engage and talk. What was that like for you? How, what was that like engaging with the community and, and your work? Um, overwhelming in a way, you know, because uh, um, I, I expressed to you like this is I've had solo exhibits before, but this is the first time where I really felt like I'm putting a lot of myself out here. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm having I have something to say. I'm, I'm naked and you can ask me whatever you want. And I'm I'm transparent at this point. So that's a huge responsibility because I don't want to come off as like, I'm the subject matter expert on this thing. No, I'm just sharing with you my observations, my thoughts and my feelings from my perspective. But I, I, I embraced it, you know, like having people come to the gallery and cause I feel like art is like a bridge. It's like, um, you're invited, you're being invited to this space and it's, um, it's, you know, there's, there's beautiful art. So like, this is not really a space to just like wow out in a way, you know, like here's an opportunity, like, and it's because like I've been doing the work for 10 years, like there is a little bit of kind of like a, um, not respect, but just like, you know, just, okay, this guy isn't just, he's not a flash in the pan, you know, he's, he's got some experiences. So credibility, you know, there's mm -hmm. some there. So I've had really great, I had really great conversations with like ex o Oceanside police person. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she was able to tell me, yeah, there's, there's good people, but there was also really bad people. So like, yes, I get that. I understand that. I'm not here to question your your observations of things too. Um, and then having a conversation with a Marine, because again, Oceanside's heavy Marine population. Um, so seeing seeing like bridging these conversations in a in a way that's like, it's almost like it's um, neutralized, you know, like because the environment, we, we're able to kind of talk on common ground and neutralize. Mm -hmm a little bit but that marine was was an ally 100 he was yeah. like it was, it was good um so yeah it's it's been a it's been a very vulnerable experience mm. one that i like have haven't felt being an artist you know in the past 10 years and like this is the first time where i'm like shoot that was that was heavy that was a lot and um and yeah, so back to self care. I'll probably have to take a break soon. <laughs> well, definitely, those those the, those ba the, those balancing acts are needed. What I was hearing when you were talking about your experience with having conversations in regards to your work is how your art was a common ground. Your, your it's like your art was a place to initiate that conversation. Verse, and that's what I love about art too is that you know I felt very vulnerable with showing my work my work as well. I, I definitely identify with that. You know, like when you let it, when you let it breathe on its own and be its own thing, it's almost like, I don't have a child, but like letting your child out into the world, be like come back in one piece, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. um, and I, I also think with having, having something um, outside of yourself and to have offer that perspective, I think that's the beauty of art is to be able to find that common ground in, um, in, in, in what it means for you and the other person versus like, this is my view. This is my view. It's like, no, like, what do you see in this? What do you see in this work right here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then in the end, you end up seeing each other. Right, right, right. 
So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to ask you um, another question and um, heavy or light, you can answer how you want. Um, how does being an artist play a role in your journey towards liberation? Um, art has always been like, for me, like, um, like therapy mm. in a way it's, it's kept me so grounded without it. I might have been lost in this capitalistic kind of like productivity, be productive, mm. get money, go get a house, you know, because that's, you know, my mom coming from, you know, Vietnam, you know, like with no opportunity, capitalism is great for her, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. so, you know, these are the, these are the things I was taught in my household, you know, go to school, make money and excel and achieve financially. Art has allowed me to kind of be, wait a minute, reel it back, hold up. It's not about you, you know, like, and like, and keep, stay focused. Like it's kept me so accountable, you know, like um, to when 2020 happened, like I have to be honest, like, like for the past three or four years, I was kind of like, I was getting promotions, you know, at my job. And I'm like, oh, I, I want to buy a house, like things like that. So, so being so lucky, you know, like not lucky, but like something like that happened that like allowed me to kind of reel it back, like recognize, hey, you know what? Like for the past four years, I've been, I've been climbing up the social ladder and my perspective now is different or was different? Am I looking at things differently? Am I looking at things from a downward perspective? If I am, get back, get back to the ground level, focus again. You're accountable for this. You can't get lost in the fog, you know? So, so art has allowed me to reconnect with that. And art, art is a language, you know, like I have these thoughts and feelings and maybe I'm not expressing them vocally to my friends and family, but my my creation my creativity has allowed me to speak a language you know to certain mm -hmm. people and um and allowed me to like s talk about my thoughts and feelings via photos via art um and uh and yeah so it's like it's it's me to be for me to uh, allow me to like a, like a portal to be vulnerable you know art I, and, and I love that. That, that that it's liberated me yeah you know? hopefully i can you know find a way to continue liberating others with it. I, yeah, I resonate with um, you talking about being a, like a, you, being an artist, it, it plays a role in humility, mm -hmm. you know, in bringing in, and I, I, the word that came to me when you were saying, uh, telling your story is grounding. Yeah. It's grounding um, to, to have art as a practice of grounding, to have art as a practice of tapping into the human condition. Um, and, and for me, when I think about, um, how art plays a role in my liberation is, is, is giving me a portal for vulnerability, but also a portal for joy. Yes. A portal to tap into my inner child, a portal for me to process, to process. It is, it is because, you know, art, like, you know, in school, like it's an elective in a way, it's not a requirement. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've almost condi been conditioned at a young age that this is not that important. Right. Mm -hmm. But like it brings so much joy. It does, like you said, makes makes you feel like you're a child again. You can use your imagination. Mm -hmm. You can dream. You can think boldly, you know, like you're so restrictive in other in other areas of your life. How you can't really do that. Exactly. And, and speaking of also like what's what's coming at my, my wheels are turning because, you know, we th think about radical soul care and normalizing radical. We're talking about, you know, being able to sustain ourselves. And yeah. what I feel like we're we're circling around is the fact that art is a, is a way for us to be able to sustain ourselves, mm -hmm. therapy, sustain yeah. ourselves, grounding sustain ourselves to be able to have these hard conversations with people who we might not, when we look at them, think that they are like us. So yeah. I'm like, it, it's, it's, I didn't like, this is not something that I like wrote down, but as this conversation is like kind of, a, uh, it's revealing to me that that's, that's like, that's 
that's the beauty of having this art community. Hill Street is this, mm -hmm. this place to sustain ourselves. Yes. You know, yeah. where we can sustain these conversations, where we can sustain relationships with each other, build relationships with each other, offer solutions and support. Um, and when I think about a social change ecosystem, I think an art space is a vital role. Having a communal space is a vital role. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and like, and to participate in a, an art, art space ecosystem does not mean that you have to be an artist, even though we're all, we all can make art. Yes. You know, yes. we're all capable of it and we just, we just, we're never, we're never, that was never prioritized in mm -hmm. our life. Yeah. But, but it, you can participate in these, the art space ecosystem in so many ways. So I just want to encourage people, you know, like if, 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 you know, storytelling isn't your thing or if creating art and is, 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 is difficult, there's so many other ways that it's like, it's so required, you know, we yes. need your, need your dreams and your ideas and your innovations too. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. I love that word participate. And I love how you, you, you shot it back to our audience. You don't have to be an artist to participate in an arts community. There are different roles we can play in supporting our ecosystems and specifically our ecosystem of Hill Street. You can participate by coming to shows. Y'all are actually participating right now in this live. You know, you can participate by donating. You can participate actually by coming to our workshop on November 21st. I had to do the plug. I had to do <laughs> that. So, you know, if you, if this conversation was inspiring to you, um, if you know Johnny, if you know me, um, we are artists and we are here. And and we just, we, you know, we just had this uh, community conversation reflecting on our roles using the social change ecosystem. But we want to take it a step further and open this conversation up to the Hill Street Country Club community and say, hey, let's join together. Let's 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 meet on a uh, Zoom on uh, November 21st and let's go through this uh, together. We're going to be reflecting on um, how we want to show up. We're going to be connecting with each other. There's going to be opportunities in the workshop for us to actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people who are at the workshop because the big part of having an art space and art community is to connect. You know, one of the, the, the three things that, you know, with Soul Tree we talk about is we want to connect, we want to create, we want to celebrate. And so with, with talking about building a social change ecosystem, we're all finding ways. How can we connect with each other? How can we create change together? And then how can we celebrate? You know, how can we celebrate the, the, the different things that we accomplish as a community together? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's so important to celebrate because if you think about it, so when we're fighting for social justice, a lot of it is loss. Yes. I, mean, I guess you can say that, right? A lot of it is like not failure, but just disappointment. So we have to celebrate those small victories, you know, like it's, it's worth it. They don't call it the resistance for no reason. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're going against some big money players, you know, right. so you, you, we yeah. have to fight resistance re with resilience. And, yeah. and part of resilience is the celebration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it is not just the pain, like, it's 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 the it's the process of of going through the pain of being vulnerable, but find being finding finding your power, finding that, and that's yeah. what you need to care. That's 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 that collective healing. That yeah. is what resilience is a part of. You know, um, yeah. that's why I'm so I feel so grateful for finding you know Hill Street Country Club. Actually, Dinah uh, found us on on Instagram. <laughs> How it is, how it goes. Yeah, you know, using social media for good. You know, everyone wants to be like, ah, oh, social media. Like, no, that's a place of connecting. That's a place where you can um you can create, you know, you can share your work. Um, so I want to follow uh this like have a, a I have two last questions for you, Johnny. Um for Soul Tree Sisters, we talk about um we have a a slogan, live vibrant shine bright. And I wanted to ask you, what does that mean to you? 
living vibrant and shining bright. Living vibrant, shining bright feels like you're 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 showing out the best the best parts of yourself and sharing it with others. But I feel like that in order to get there, like there has to be a lot of internal work done. Like a workshop like you you're providing on on November 21st to find out like define your role, you know, like reflect on on what those roles are and then plan, you know, like or like simply going to therapy or something like that, right? Working on those 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 shadows, you know, or whatever, good and bad. Like so then you know exactly where you can like you can define even more your roles because once you get to all that internal work, like and sh you're shining internally, you can then shine outwardly and shine it, sh be vibrant and shine bright outwardly. And, and that will have a profound effect on, on every ecosystem and aspect of your life. So I feel like, yes, doing that internal work first and foremost is shining bright and living private, private. Yes. Okay. I love that. I mean, it goes back to Angela Davis's quote, anyone who's interested in making change in the world also has to learn to take care of themselves. Yeah. So living vibrant and shine bright, like, I definitely like agree with you on that. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Johnny, for um, having this conversation with me. This is actually me and Johnny's first time meeting. Yeah, nice to meet you, Alyssa. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We've like seen each other, commenting on each other's um, social media handles. We've like been like supporting each other uh, virtually. So I just, I'm. It, it was such a pleasure to talk to you. Um, and I, I really look forward to, um, working with you in the future, continuing this conversation. And it, it, it really brings me, um, it gives me that, you know, that energy you're talking about to know that there are other artists out here who, who will want to engage, um, by supporting each other, by connecting and, and offering, um, offering a lens through their work you know, as a portal. So yeah. thank you for having this conversation with me. Um, thank you so much, Hill Street Country Club, for be being a space that allows us to grow as people, as artists, um, and as as activists who wanna engage in our community. Um, the one thing I wanna just also add about, um, about Hill Street is that it's a place that if you show up, you will have that opportunity to to engage. We, we're always creating programs that are starting conversations, whether it's you know the reuse project, talking about you know um, finding ways to be more eco friendly, whether it's Johnny's exhibit Rad uh, Normalized Radical, which is talking about you know um, activism and sh and and all the things that are going on um, in the streets, and really documenting um, uh, documenting this this movement and, and showing the truth of this movement and the power of this movement. Um, and then also having us, uh, Soul Tree Sisters, to be here to host and facilitate community workshops that allow us to empower our community members to, to define their roles and be active uh, members of Hill Street Country Club. So yes, thank you so much, Johnny. If anyone has any questions, Feel free to reach out to us. We will be having this series again next Wednesday. We'll be speaking with one of the co-founders of Hill Street Country Club, Dinah herself. We will be talking again and reflecting on the social change ecosystem. She will be diving into the roles that she plays um, and we'll be doing the same thing because this is all to promote our uh, workshop on November 21st. We'll, our community members will have a chance to do exactly what we're doing right now having a conversation, connecting, reflecting on how we want to continue to do this work, to want how we want to continue to engage in this movement and to just have a place to feel like you're a part of something. So, yeah. yeah. Do you have any last things you wanna share with, with our community? Yeah, I just, just say don't miss Dinah's talk, that's for sure. I think it's gonna be very informative and she does a lot uh and it's a way it's it's a it, it could be provided i mean that could be treated as a way to find out how you can get involved with hill street too exactly, exactly. all of these conversations um are a chance for you to to get to know um 
Hill Street Country Club that and, and the individual individuals who make make up Hill Street. So this is a really chance for us to say, hello, y'all. We're mm -hmm. here. We're in Oceanside. We're taking up space and we're not okay. going to this. Is, this is not over. This is just the beginning. This is us cultivating this energy because we need to keep this going. We need to continue to do this work. We need to con continue to show up for each other. So thank you so much, Johnny, for being here. We will thank see you. you next Wednesday. Bye, everybody. Bye.